and then happy Friday. Happy Friday. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. I'm here with Haley again. Uh, you actually, it was warm enough yesterday, you actually got to go out and throw the frisbee a little bit with some Did, friends. Yeah. In there. That was, uh, that's, that's going to be the only time for a little while. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> but we've got one day, one day in. The last day. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was in the mid 40s or so. Mm -hmm. It's like heat wave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty good. So th thank you for joining us this Friday. We're going to be um, having indoor worship again. Uh, you can see the details at goodshepherdsc.org. Uh, that's at 8 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. Masks are required. We open the windows. So you bring your, wear your jacket inside, right? <laughs> and, um, you know, you're welcome to join us for, the, for any of those. We also post all of our worship services online at goodshepherdsc.org as well. And again, if you have any prayer requests, comments, concerns, questions about the, the study uh, that we had on Philippians or any of the other studies, uh, Pastor B. Spang at Comcast.net. And this is the last chapter in Philippians today, and then we're going to go on to Colossians. Um, so it goes Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. And the way I've always remembered the order of those was GE Power Company. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Got to have little, like, uh, acronyms and yeah. different things to remember. Chemistry, you have all those. Right? A lot, yeah. The, only one, the ones I remember from chemistry from high school <laughs> was uh, uh, Hunkelbrif. You I'm know, not that familiar one? with Hunkelbrif. <laughs> the, the diatomic oh, element. The diatomic. Hydrogen, oxygen, ni nitrogen, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and fluorine. I'm impressed. Good job. <laughs> That was from 10th grade. That was like a thousand years ago, right? <laughs> there was another one I had there. Uh, anyway, there, that's all I read. That's my chemistry knowledge, just done. <laughs> just it's like, good thing to take away. <laughs> I don't even know. I don't know what they're. I, I don't even know what, uh, what what why we had to learn that. I'm not really sure. Some reason in 10th grade. Yeah, <laughs> some reason your teacher gave you. Yeah. So we're in um, we're in Philippians chapter. Chapter 4, it's the last chapter. Uh, Philippians has, well, it's an epistle of joy, but it also has a lot of little pithy set statements that you'll see posted on uh, people's houses, like on maybe on a, uh, you know, some carving or something like that, or even a bumper sticker or some things like that. So it's got a lot of little, little statements along those lines. <clears throat> so I'm going to read the first uh, nine verses in there. So... Philippians chapter 4, therefore my brothers, you whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, this is how you should stand firm in the Lord, dear friends. I plead with Eudia and I, and I plead with Syntyche to agree with each other in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you, loyal yoke fellow, help these women who have contended at my side in, in the cause of the gospel. Along with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, Whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. Now verse 10. Yep. I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you have renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you have been concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do everything through him who strengthens me. Yet it was good of you to share in, your, in my troubles. Moreover, as you Philippians know, in the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel, when I set, set out from Macedonia, 
Not one church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving, except you only. For even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me aid again and again when I was in need. Not that I am looking for a gift, but I am looking for what may be credited to your account. I received full payment and even more. I am amply supplied now that I have received from Ephorodotus the gifts you sent. They are a fragrant offering, a acceptable sacrifice, pleasing to God, and my God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Jesus Christ. To our Lord and Father, um, be glory forever and ever. Amen. Greet all the saints in Jesus Christ. The brothers who are with me send greetings. All the saints send you greetings, especially those who belong to, to Caesar's household. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. All right. Okay, let's, let's pray. Father, thank you for this time together and for your word. Your word is truth, and Lord God, may our attitude uh, be reflective of how much you have given to us in and through Jesus uh, as we live out our days, as we interact with people, as we go about our business, go about our schooling, uh, all through the day, Lord God, guide and direct us. May our peace rest in you and be found in you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so, um, again, this epistle of joy, so there's a lot of things. It says rejoice, joy, you know, and so first verse of chapter 4, uh, Therefore, my brothers, you whom I love and long for, my joy and crown. So he, he cares, he says, compassion for the people of uh, Philippi, and he's saying, you know, you yourselves are my joy and my crown. Uh, to encourage somebody that way, is, I think, is really uplifting and, and important. Like, wow, really happy to have you in my life, uh, be a part of my life. I'm really glad that God has sent you into my life. And um, <clears throat> now he also acknowledges in verse 2 that, uh, of course, there are disagreements <laughs> in the church. There always has been. There always will be because whenever two people get together, at some point, they're going to have a disagreement, right, on, on different things. So he pleads for these two ladies in the church to come to agreement, to work out their things. We don't even know. We don't know what the issue was, but it does tell you that, yes, he's acknowledging there are things that there is uh, a little bit of a disagreement or conflict over. And uh, then you get to, like, verse uh, 4, Rejoice in the Lord always, I will say it again, rejoice. And that's one of the ones that you see, like, maybe on a bumper sticker sometimes or, or in somebody's house. Uh, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. So, I guess, you know, when you think about that, um, I've met sometimes I've met Christians who almost have their this fake smile on their face. Uh, oh, like, I'm happy all the time and things like that. So I think there's a difference between having the joy of the Lord and happiness. So I'm not happy all the time. <laughs> there's sometimes I'm, you know, I'm hungry. I'm not that happy. Yeah. <laughs> there, <you know. laughs> there's, there's times when just, you know, things aren't going. But I can also, I, in the midst of that, I can still have joy knowing that uh, I am God's. I'm held in his arms. Uh, you know, there's things that come into life, and so it's like, wow, I, I didn't expect that, or I didn't want that to happen. Uh, you know, I, I'm not, maybe maybe you're happy about the pandemic, but I'm not, I'm not happy not about the, happy. I'm, not, I'm not happy about the pandemic, but we can still have a peace and a joy in our life in the midst, midst of that. So I, I, I want us to understand there's, there's this difference between, you know, happiness, and uh, I think in our culture, well, it's kind of right there in, in the Declaration of Independence, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Um, and that kind of is a, almost a false uh, thing, that a bill of sales or a false promise that's given to us. We're not going to be happy all the time, but we can have a peace and a joy about us in Christ. There are bad things that happen in the world right around us, and there are some things that aren't that fun. Uh, rejoice in the Lord always. Uh, and then I love, uh, this is a very important uh, verse for the times we live in. Verse 6, do not be anxious about anything, 
but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your re request to God. Uh, if, if, I, if I'm reading the statistics and so forth on what's going on and the mental health issues, anxiety is a huge issue in our, in our culture. Amongst young people, amongst older people, it's, it's, just a big, it's just a big issue. And what he's saying is, let's present everything before God. Let's turn it over to the Lord. Let's, let's give it into his hand. And if we recognize that we're held in his everlasting and loving arms, that we can have a peace in the midst of that. So, you know, I'm sure, uh, for instance, uh, when you had to take your comps for, you've taken your comps, right? No. Okay, why did I bring that up? <laughs> now I'm increasing anxiety. <laughs> so, okay. All right, so uh, anyway, <laughs> there can be some anxiety, right? Yeah. <laughs> going, going, going into that. So, yes. uh, I just blew the entire study there. <laughs> But there is time then you can go in before the Lord in prayer and give you a peace about the things as you're going into it. Hey, you know what? You're held in the, Lord, in the hands of the Lord, uh, no matter what the results of your research and, uh, and taking your comps and stuff like that. So when are the comps coming up? It'll be July. Oh, okay. So you got a long time to worry yeah. about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Room to procrastinate. Right. <laughs> All right. So rejoice in the Lord always, and, and then do not be anxious about anything. So going into the comps. Um, and then I, I like um, verses 8 and 9 where he's saying whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent, praiseworthy, think about such things. And uh, I don't know, I, maybe Haley, you kind of like in, this, in the constant bombardment, you know, maybe, do you, do you have cable at, at your house? Do you have, no. oh, good for you. <laughs> so you don't get the 24-hour, uh, seven-day-a-week uh, news cycle, which is constantly bombarding us with nope. with negativity and stuff like that. But you have a phone, right? And you can, I'm sure you can get notifications on there, and there's all kinds of stuff that pops pops up. And, and, and we're constantly bombarded with this. And I think this is very difficult for us. And I think that, could, that also contributes to our anxiety then, right? If we are constantly bombarded with the next crisis, the next thing that's coming along, the next, you know, it seems like bad news sells, so there's a next negative thing that's happening. And it becomes hard for us to think about the good things, whatever is good, whatever is noble, whatever is uh, praiseworthy, whatever is lovely. Um, so is there any way you have in your life to kind of, like, disconnect from the negativity sometimes and just kind of like find a, a, more of a sense of peace in the midst of this. Um, don't open my news app. <laughs> don't open your <laughs> but, news. Uh, look for the happy news stories intentionally. Oh, so there okay. are news stations who focus on the good things in the, the good community. News. They don't do the hard stuff, you know, right. worldwide. Okay. Uh, I know that you also you kind of go out take a run sometimes. Mm -hmm. Does that does that help kind of clear? Yeah, get your endorphins running. Yeah, a little bit. So yeah. that's nice. Yeah. So it, and I find that useful for me as well. I like to hike, um, hiking, um, and things like that. So just kind of disconnect on purpose. Don't check the phone and the next thing that's coming along, and just enjoy the beauty of God's creation. So taking a walk, going outside, taking a walk. And just enjoying uh, maybe a sunrise, sunset, whatever it is, just disconnect for a little bit, and then it helps us. It helps us refocus anyway. I've got a lot of studies have shown, for instance, with with kids, uh, you know, we think like recess. Recess is an important thing. You yeah. got to go out and run around and, and play, and then the kids can come back and they're ready to do some more work. Mm -hmm. And we can't sit for eight hours and concentrate and do work all the time. You need to kind of take a break now and then. So get out, get out, take the walk, take, go out for the run, get the good news app yes. <laughs> in there. Um, <clears throat> all right. So, um, and then he, I like how he says in verses 10 and following that he learns to be content. He learned what it means to be content in all circumstances, whether he has plenty or whether he has little, whether he's fed or hungry, living in plenty or want. Um, I can do everything. Here's another one of those passages that you see on people's bumper stickers or something. I can do everything through him who gives me strength, or Christ who gives me strength. And he has 
Um, and again, uh, the culture in which we live in, we're uh, with a constant uh, bombardment of advertising and so forth. Advertising is meant to make you think you need something, right? <laughs> you have to have something. So we're constantly told we're lacking something. There's something out there we're lacking. And in fact, those of you who are in your 20s and stuff, you're the most marketed to generation in the history of the world. You've been marketed to your entire life. And it gets smarter. The way the marketing goes is smarter and smarter. In fact, uh, like the advertisements that we receive uh, are based on what yeah. we had liked yeah. and the algorithms work that way and so forth. So it's reinforcing all of that. And there, uh, so you're the most marketed to generation in the history of the world, which is constantly telling you you need something else. In order to have fulfillment in life, you have to have something else. And he's saying, I learned it would be the content. If I have food and clothing and shelter, I mean, beyond that, you know, we, we, but but we're we're sold. Well, no, unless you have the latest iPhone, you're you're a loser. <laughs> unless you have, unless you have, uh, you know, unless you have the right, uh, you know, the right latest clothes or whatever it is, then you know you're just not with it. Or this, this, that, the other thing. It's constantly that. Unless you have hair, you you know you're 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 done. <laughs> you're, you're through. <laughs> so you know all these all these kind of things. It's just a constant. Um, the bombardment there, but to learn how to have peace in Christ in the midst of this. Um, all right. So, anything else that you see from from any of this that you, as we were kind of going through? Yeah. He's also asking them to be generous with what they've been blessed with, you know, and they're giving. So, I, I, you know, as far as um, giving. When you're at different stages of life, that will look differently. So right now you're a grad student. That means you're impoverished. <laughs> Not really. Not really. You're, but you're fine. You're, yeah. you're, you're, you're doing fine. But at, at once at some stage, if you pursue and go work in industry or something like that, you'll be in a different stage. Of yeah, life. I'll be more fine. <laughs> you'll be more fine. In that. So. Um, I don't know. Anything else that you, you want to talk about that was in there or that jumped out at you? All right. So we thank you for uh, joining us uh, this day, but we're going to have a prayer for our nation. Please be in prayer for our nation as we, uh, the, over the next um, week or so, uh, that there be peaceful transition of power, that we would, uh, as Christians, say, show in our words, in our actions, in our deeds, that our hope, is in Christ in the midst of everything. Whether you agree with what, what is things that have gone on, disagree with somebody, that we would show by our words and deeds and actions that our hope is in Christ and in Christ alone. Let's let's pray. Father, we come in your pre presence and are thankful for this time together. We're thankful for the book of Philippians. We're thankful for the joy that the, the Apostle Paul showed and, and, and gave us an example of even in the midst of his imprisonment. So, Lord God, help us to live our lives knowing that we're held in your everlasting and loving arms, knowing that we have a peace that uh, transcends all understanding, knowing, knowing that we can cast all of, our all of our anxious anxiety and burdens upon you, go before you in prayer. We praise you and thank you for that. We ask for your peace to be with this nation that uh, we would seek you with all of our heart, mind, and spirit, that there be a, a, a peaceful transition of power, that we would show as Christians uh, through our words, our deeds, our actions, uh, in our interactions with people, that our hope uh, is found in Jesus and in Jesus alone, and that we wouldn't change, trade the power of the gospel for anything less uh, that the world has to offer. Uh, so we thank you, Lord God, for working in our lives and for the peace that you give us that is found in Jesus. So everybody have a great weekend, and God bless you all. And we're going to start with Colossians on Monday morning. God bless you.